Progressive Christianity is not Christianity at all, and the effort to minimize the authority of the scriptures is cancerous. So-called progressive pastors are attempting to make the gospel and the scriptures in general more palatable for the world, but in so doing they are preaching a different gospel. Unfortunately, these folks have found a favorable home on social media, garnering the attention from seekers, skeptics, and those who would seek to distance themselves from the more controversial aspects of the Christian faith. Today I'm going to react to one of TikTok's most favorite progressive pastors. Interestingly enough, when I first came across this fellow, I had no idea he was a pastor at all. In fact, he looked like a teenager to me. But I can't make fun of him. After all, a lot of people think that I look like I'm 30, so I guess we both have issues looking our age. Anyway. Hey, what's up guys? It's Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I help you find Jesus and follow him daily. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. It is only through your support on there that this ministry keeps going and growing. Our goal is to get to 300 patrons by the end of the year, and if you want to help us get closer to that goal and reach that goal by the end of the year, uh, head to the link in my bio, patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple. One last thing. We got new merch. You can check it out on the store, dailydisciple.ca slash shop to pick up some for yourself today. Now onto the video. Hey, my name is Reverend Brandon. I'm a Christian pastor and I have a public service announcement for everyone. There's not a single verse in the Bible that condemns homosexuality, that condemns premarital sex, that says that sex is only to be reserved for the context of a heterosexual marriage. There's not a verse that condemns polyamory. None of that is condemned in the Bible. All of that was created by purity culture. With bro, what? Bro, bro, bro. No, you didn't just say that though. He didn't just say that though. Did he just say the Bible doesn't say anything about polyamory? This man wants multiple wives? My guy, what on earth? What is this? This man makes sweeping claims that he, I assure you, cannot defend. That's not even the end of the video, but I want to begin by addressing his first couple claims, but I definitely want to talk about his accusations of purity culture, because if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I trash on purity culture, but this man is going way out of line. I feel kind of weird about pulling up these verses because it just kind of takes a quick uh, open your Bible to find out that what he's saying is completely wrong, but let me just give you one or two examples um, combating these accusations from him uh, in terms of homosexuality, and you guys know me I don't like to just trash on LGBT issues all the time like that's not my hobby horse it's just that progressive Christians continually want to bring up the issues of LGBT so it's like well I guess I need to talk about it it's not my hobby horse it's theirs apparently they can't obsess about it anymore really um so let's just talk about it homosexuality Leviticus 2013 this verse is very familiar I'm sure to the progressive Christians as well because they hate it so much but it says if a man lies with a man as with a woman both of them have committed an abomination there's no really getting around that sure they'll have accusations that it's mistranslated or or it's you know oh man that's old fashioned that's done away with but if we're going to take the bible at its word then okay look god's moral law does not change so there's ceremonial law that does change that there was civic law that was having to do with the specific context of the israelites but this kind of law does not change. I want to actually let you guys screen cap a list of the different laws according to the Old Testament to show you that these kind of laws, these moral laws, aren't wiped away. In 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 to 11, it says this, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So let's talk about premarital sex. <laughs> I never thought I'd be saying that. <laughs> okay, Galatians 5.19 says this, Flee sex 
sexual immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Matthew 5, 28 says, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Hebrews 13, 4 says, Let the marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Even looking back at Genesis when it says that man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife, we begin to get a clear glimpse of God's design. Sexual immorality is defined as anything outside of the marriage context. One man, one woman. Jesus even goes to the extent of saying that if you look at a woman who is not your wife with lust, you've committed adultery with her. The Bible doesn't need to spell it out for you that polyamory and sex outside of marriage is a sin that is wrong because it is evident and it is obvious according to all the vast amounts of scriptures that talk about sexual immorality that God's best and his design is one man, one woman having those sexual desires fulfilled in the context of marriage and marriage only. One of my biggest issues with progressive Christianity is that it tries to take away people's shame in a harmful way. You see, progressive Christianity tries to convince us that there should be no need for shame of any kind, that shame is perpetrated by purity culture or whatever else, and that uh, it really serves no use and, and we shouldn't really need to feel accountable morally before God anyway, because he's just disinterested in those things. He doesn't care. He gives us sexual freedom in all ways that we could imagine. And the funny thing is, is that before watching this video, if I were to bring up the idea that progressive Christians were for polyamory, that would have been painted as a straw man argument. But here you go. This is what progressive Christianity offers up. It's sexual liberation to the fullest. But is it truly liberating? You see, while progressive Christianity tries to liberate us from shame and, and responsibility, true biblical Christianity points us to Jesus and his substitutionary atonement on the cross by which he took our shame upon himself so we didn't need to bear the weight of the shame and the guilt that we justly deserved. And Jesus took that on him. He bore that on himself. One of the most tragic elements of progressive Christianity is that it paints God as, as an incompetent being who went back on what he said in the Old Testament that, in fact, let, you know, millions of Christians go along thinking that they understood him and, and read the Bible and that was his word. But in fact, oh no, that wasn't my word. That was just a, a bunch of garbage. It was mistranslated. And, and you got to, you know, wiggle your way and worm your way to figure out what I have to say because it's so unclear because I'm just incompetent with communicating what I actually want from you, if anything. It's not even that progressive Christianity has its own set of findings or its own set of principles. Progressive Christianity is a chameleon configuring itself to align with whatever current social or political movement seems to be most popular in the social sphere. When true biblical Christianity is supposed to be based on the unchanging word of God and his character, not on the changing whims of political or social movements. We are called to be conformed to Christ, not to culture. Okay, now back to the video. He was just claiming that all these teachings about homosexuality or sex before marriage or that polyamory was wrong are all a result result of purity culture. As laughable as that sounds, let's continue. First, that condemns polyamory. None of that is condemned in the Bible. All of that was created by purity culture, which emerged not from the pages of scripture, not from the lips of Jesus, but from human beings who wanted to control people's bodies, control people's minds, and the way that you control a person's mind is by controlling the most intimate part of them their sex, their sexuality, and their gender. The Bible does not put all of these constraints that the church has historically put on people. In fact, Christ says, I've come to set you free from the constraints of the law. Don't let religious people bind you up with all sorts of religious laws. For those of you who have been following me in this channel for a while, you know that I have legitimate critiques for purity culture, and I've gone in depth in numerous videos with those critiques and uh, tearing it apart, basically, and, you know, showing that a lot of what was being taught at the peak of purity culture was extra biblical, meaning that it was not found in the scriptures. It was not derived from the scriptures. 
But I have to say it's pretty comical that he's blaming general Christian sexual ethics on purity culture and, and not just pointing at the Bible, which he should be, because that's actually the source of these laws and these uh, moral teachings. You see, nowadays it's real easy to blame everything on purity culture. And maybe I've even gotten caught up in that, you know, every time something pops up, you're like, oh my goodness, that's purity culture's fault. That's Josh Harris's fault. And I kiss dating goodbye. That's when it all started. It's like, well, chill man like honestly these are things that you can easily find in the bible the, the stuff that he's saying it's not in the bible guys there's no verse that says this it's like have you read the bible my guy i'm serious like you're a pastor but at the end of the day a lot of it is like well yeah that might say that but i don't agree with that or that was mistranslated or i think that should be a different word or you know according to my translations or my progressive friends we don't think that's quite accurate it's like Okay, well, you can go against it, but actually say, okay, well, we don't believe what's in the Bible. Don't just blame it on, well, this is purity culture. He's not proposing freedom from purity culture. He's proposing freedom from God's direct expectations and commands on how we ought to conduct ourselves sexually. When we dispose of God's commands because they aren't convenient, we make a God an idol in our own image. At the heart of it, the primary problem with progressive Christianity, that's a lot of peace, is that they have created a God in their own image, who approves of whoever they want to be with no direction towards transformation. What we need to realize is that Jesus' offer into new life was not an offer to sit in our sin and stay the way we are. He wasn't just offering us relief from our conscience conscience so we could keep doing the things that he hates. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Galatians 5.1 it's no wonder that the ideas of progressive Christianity are extremely popular. Who wouldn't want to be told that they're perfect just the way they are and that God requires really nothing of them other than to join a march next month and getting the right bumper stickers and, and joining the right clubs and being inclusive and unproblematic. If you're looking for real truth and real meaning, that comes from reading God's word, knowing who God is, understanding the gospel, submitting all ourselves to Christ as living sacrifices. Here's something I want to address. I think Christians that would identify themselves as more conservative um, and hold to the word of God thoroughly, there has become a little bit of an issue. A lot of young people feel immense amounts of shame. And whether that was caused through purity culture, legitimate purity culture, where there were extra biblical commands that were placed on them that they did not measure, measure up, or just this emphasis on being a good Christian left them in a place where they felt like they couldn't be a Christian at all because they didn't measure up. A lot of us still carry around that shame because we say, okay, well, God could never want me because I can't be that perfect Christian or I can't do all the stuff that I was told to do as a teen and I can't live up to these standards. So does God want me at all? And my encouragement for you is yes, he does. But here's the difference. We meet God on his terms. We lay down our lives. We lay down our sin at the foot of the cross and receive his grace and his goodness. And it's not of our own doing. It's only through Christ. But progressive Christianity will try to tell you that you, God needs to meet you on your terms. That as long as he doesn't interfere with your stuff, that it's all good. That God really has no expectations of you whatsoever and there should be no shame whatsoever. But we need to understand there is a legitimate place for guilt and shame. But then once we pass that to Christ, when we give that to Christ, then we are truly free. Then we see things coming up of us feeling like, oh man, well, does God even want me? I, I feel so ashamed. I, I'm not where I want to be. I, I'm not who I want to be. And God's grace is there to, to assure us and, and, and God is there to accept us because it's this progressive thing, right? It's not like this moment we're all going to be perfect, but progressive Christianity doesn't even want to start you on the path. It doesn't even want you to admit that you're wrong, that you need saving, that you're actually not perfect the way you are, that we need help and we need God to transform our lives. And that transformation is both a moral transformation by which our character and behavior is becoming more like Christ. And it's also a healing process by which that shame and that kind of residual feelings of like, oh man, I, my self-worth and, 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 do I have any play? How could God even want me in these issues? 
that's being healed because God is showing us who we truly are. We are children of his. Progressive Christianity not only has bankrupt theology, but it also provides a tremendous hindrance to people that are actually trying to heal emotionally because who can heal when they live in deception? Living in deception as a means to ease our conscience will not provide us with the healing or the rest that we're looking for. Only when we lay that down, when we admit that we are wrong, that we admit that we need Christ, that's when healing begins. That's when true freedom begins. And I'd love to talk more about that on future videos, but that is enough for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, I encourage you to subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A uh, huge sh shout out again to everyone on Patreon. Thank you so much for getting behind what I'm doing here. And uh, I will see you guys next time. God bless.